Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. We've gone over the basics of what non-right triangles are, how we label all the parts, and what it means to solve a triangle. And then we're going to get into law of sines, law of cosines, and a self-quiz. All right, this video is law of sines. Let's take a look. Remember that we're not talking about solving or finding the missing parts of a right triangle. To do that, we would just use a sine, cosine, or tangent function and that's another video series that I already have on my YouTube channel. Well, we're talking about either acute angles of a triangle here, an acute triangle, or an obtuse triangle. All right, and again, notice that we've got capital letters for the angles, and um, on the opposite side is lowercase letters for the sides. So we're going to be consistent with the way we name these things. So here's the law of sines. It's basically a ratio between the sine of an angle and its opposite side. So sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Now it depends on the problem you're working on and what the missing information is and what the other given information is. So we can combine these first two ratios together and solve for one of those missing parts or we could do it between the B's and the C's or we could do it between the A's and the C's. Also remember, as I mentioned before, you could just flip them upside down and have the side over the sine of the angle. Now it's a pretty easy um, formula to remember, we just have to kind of figure out which is the most appropriate one to use. Now when do we use the law of sines? When we're given two angles and a non-included side, known as AAS, or if we're given two angles and an included side, known as ASA. So we have to kind of figure out which parts are labeled. Let's try some examples. All right, for number one, let me kind of walk you through this one. It says find the measure of angle C. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just mark it right there. And we notice that angle C creates its opposite side, which is 9. So thankfully, we have that information. And then we have angle A, and we have its opposite side here, which is 29. So we're going to use this law of sines. A over sine A equals C over sine C. Now let's plug in the values that we know. So since angle A is 63, the sine value of that, just plug that in the calculator, is 0.8910. All right, we usually go to four digits. Now, of course, we're going to cross multiply, and that will give us a new equation. We're going to cross multiply, and 9 times 0.8910 is that, 8.019, of course. And then we're going to divide each side by 29. All right, so typical um, proportion here. We're going to just cross multiply and solve for the missing part. So sine C equals that decimal value. Now look at, we are looking for the actual angle measure, all right? We know what the sine value of that angle is, 0.2765. This is true for the law of sines. Whenever we're looking for a missing angle, we have to do the inverse function, all right? So sine minus one. Remember now from some of your classroom, hopefully you remember, this is the arc sine. All right, in other words, the inverse of sine. The inverse of sine C of that value, 0.2765 equals, and that will give us our answer. All right, we know the sine value of the angle, now we have to find the angle. So we do the inverse function of the sine. All right, what did you get? Now let me show you how to do this on your calculator. You're going to punch in the value, 0.2765. Now this is a, a calculator that's built in as an accessory here to my Mac or your Windows PC. Um, but if you even have a handheld calculator, look for either an inverse or a shift or a second function button. If you don't see sine minus 1 as one of your choices, then 
In this case, I'm going to click the up arrow, which is sort of the shift button, and notice how it has sine minus 1. So, when I click on that, now I have what angle gives me that previous value. So it's about 16.05. Let's call it 16.1. 16.1 degrees. All right. Now I'd like you to try number two. And again, notice that you're going to use the law of sines and give that a try. We're looking for angle C. All right, well, hopefully you got 50.1 degrees. Okay, let's kind of break it down and see how we get that. All right, well, you notice that we are given angle A and its opposite side and asked for angle C, but we know its opposite side. So we're going to do this law of sines with A's and C's. I'm going to go ahead and put the sine functions on top, although it doesn't matter. We could flip it around vertically. Let's plug in the numbers sine a we don't know what that is yet okay let's just kind of leave that there for a second and grab a calculator in a minute the side a is opposite that angle so that'd be 19 and sine c it'd be our sine value of an angle we don't know yet so we're going to go ahead and use that basically as a variable and side c is opposite there that'd be 17 all right, let's find what sine of 59 degrees is. I plug in 59 degrees, hit the sine function button, and let's go ahead and take that out to four digits. So 0 0.8572, 0 0.8572. All right, now we're gonna cross multiply and see what happens. Now we're gonna divide each side by 19. So sine of angle C equals this decimal value, about 0.7669. Again, four digits is really a good idea and pretty standard. And then to write this out, we say the measure of angle C equals the inverse sine function of that amount. Okay, and it's a lot of symbols here, but basically to find the angle, we have to do the inverse sine of that value. So obviously, got to put that in our calculator. So point. 7669. Look for the sine minus 1 function. I don't have it showing, so I'll go to inverse or shift, and there it is 50.076. Of course, that would be our answer 50.1. All right, now look for the next video in this series. It'll be a problem set, problem set 1, and we'll focus on the law of sines just for more practice. Thanks a lot for watching. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard.